So Loop Deck have just announced that they're going to be supporting Premiere with their new Loop Deck Plus model. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking you through my favourite features, some of the things I don't like, and generally how it works with Premiere CC. So when I'm editing in Premiere, I tend to use two different peripherals for most of my editing needs. On my left hand, I use the Shuttle Pro version 2, and this allows me to do all of my zooming, my scrubbing, adding edits, adding ripple deletes, I can add in and out points, I can save it and I can export it, all on my left hand. On my right hand, I tend to use the Logitech MX Master Mouse, which is just a really nice ergonomic mouse, and I can also change between my tools using the two buttons on the right hand side. Um, and I also use something called the Stream Deck, which is designed for gamers when they're live streaming, but I tend to use it to change the speed and duration of my clips um, and add LUTs and things like that. The one thing that is missing from my setup, or it was missing from my setup, is a hardware console that can control the colours in Premiere, or specifically control Lumetri in Premiere. There are consoles out on the market, but you are talking thousands and thousands of pounds, and the Loop Deck comes in at just £199. Now, when I got the Loop Deck out of the box, I was expecting it to do really basic things like um, control the exposure, control the contrast and the saturation, the same way that it does in Lightroom. But I didn't realise it was so customizable. All the buttons around the edges, all of the knobs and switches, everything is customizable to do whatever you want it to do. So in the long term, you could, well, I could replace my Shuttle 2, I could replace my Stream Deck and have everything I need to do directly on the Loop Deck. I was really impressed with the Loop Deck's software and it's really easy to use and it goes really in depth. So if you wanna add a shortcut or a macro key, you can do that straight out of the box. Let's jump over to the PC and I'll show you exactly how it works and some of my favorite features. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of things I like about the Loop Deck and I'm also going to run through some of the features that I'm not so keen on but they're not a deal breaker to me. So the first thing is it does feel much better made than the previous generation. Uh, the knobs and switches feel a bit better. Uh, the buttons are still a little bit spongy um, and the knobs they're all right, they don't feel really high quality um, and there's no um, indication of where you are when you're twisting the knob. I wish you had some kind of clicks um, so you could feel exactly where you were and make really fine adjustments. The overall look of it, I think it looks great. It's not too big, it's not too small, it fits really well here. And when I'm editing videos, I don't tend to use my keyboard. I tend to use my shuttle, and my mouse and my stream deck which isn't plugged in at the moment but this should be able to accommodate all the features that I would need to use my keyboard for in the future. So another thing that I really like about the loop deck is just how customizable it is like I said before. So you can customize all of these buttons to do whatever you want really within Premiere. They do some really nice features straight out of the box and there is a PDF on the loop deck website which goes through what it will do when it comes out of the box. Um, this is a, another layer, which is when you press the, the function key on the loop deck, it'll do different things. And then you can add a custom mode layer as well. Say for example, if you wanted to change what one of these buttons did, all you need to do is click on the wheel and you can control exactly what parameter it changes. At the moment it's doing the zoom, but we could change it so it did the pan, or you can change which clip you wanted. You can change it to anything you want within Premiere. This software seems really well thought through. Um, it's very full featured um, and I'm really pleased with what a good job they've done. So as you can see, I've imported the footage that I've just shot of the intro and I'm just gonna take a little tour around the basic functions that the Loop Deck does straight out of the box. We're gonna start with these buttons down here. Um, so when I'm editing weddings or when I'm editing something really long, I really wish there was a way that you could speed up the footage and keep the audio. Now there may very well be a way of doing this, but I just haven't found it yet. Um, but with the loop deck, it does it right out of the box. So this key here is your start and stop button. Um, so if we press play, the video is just going to start playing. If we press the play button and then this button, this will make it your fast forward. So it will play it at double speed and the more times you press it, the faster it's going to get. It's really good that it keeps the audio because then you can work through a really long project really quickly. So I'm just going to give you a demonstration. So if I press play, 
I'm going to press fast forward, plays a double speed and quadruple speed. And then it's, I guess it's eight times the speed, but you lose the audio and obviously the video starts jumping around a little bit. So down to the left, you've obviously got your copy and your paste and you, they work really well. And say so I've just done those and it was an accident. You've got your undo at the top and also your redo. So they're really handy to have right at your fingertips. I'm now gonna go through the dials. So starting with this big top one, when you turn it to the right, it just jumps between clips and you can go back again. That's a really handy feature to have. I've actually got this feature set up on my shuttle. So I've got it as these two buttons on the side. And I use that feature a lot, especially when you're making really fine edits and you wanna be really accurate. So the D1 dial is just your zoom tool, which is again, really nice to have. And again, I've got that set up on my shuttle as this jog wheel on the left. I could not live without that zoom wheel. It changed my life when I set that up. So it's really nice that it's built into the loop deck. So the contrast, like you would imagine, adjusts the contrast. You can see the slider on the right hand side going up and down as I twist this knob from left to right. This does bring me on to one of the features that I don't really like about this product. There is quite a delay. Well, there's not, it's not a massive delay, but it's enough to be annoying um, between when you twist the knob and you know, actually changing the slider position. Um, it's not the end of the world. It could, I just feel like it could be improved. Maybe it's a limitation of the Adobe software. Um, again, with the exposure, it kind of does what it says on the tin. It's just really nice to have the hardware dial instead of trying to control the sliders with a mouse. So obviously there's no clarity function within Premiere, uh, but online this says that this knob controls the trim tool. I don't know what that is. I haven't got that set up. So I'm just gonna jump over that one. Uh, the blacks do the blacks, the shadows do the shadows, the whites do the whites, the highlights do the highlights, the vibrance does the vibrance, the saturation does the saturation, the temperature and the tint, they all do what they say on the tin, so I'm not gonna go through those. Uh, so these two little buttons in the center are set up as your in and out points really handy again this is something that i've got set up on my shuttle as those two black buttons on the side i use that feature so much so it's really handy to have um, another feature that i use a lot is i have this button over here set up to just make a cut wherever i am in my playhead and they've got that set up as the c5 the custom 5 button so the arrow keys down on the side, they've got the left and the right key, which take you through the different frames. Again, this is something I've got set up on my shuttle. The shuttle probably does win on this one just because you can, you can scrub through a little bit faster and find a frame where I don't look like I'm having a stroke. Um, and the up and down keys just do the same as this wheel here. So if you wanna jump to the end of a clip or the beginning of a clip, that's what you can do with those keys. Another really nice handy button on the loop deck is the screen mode. So you can go to full screen if you want, a push of a button, again, really handy. Now the buttons across the top basically take you to different parts of Premiere. So if you do P1, it's gonna take you to your timeline. If you do P2, it's gonna take you to your source monitor. If you do P3, it's gonna take you to your program monitor. Um, and P4 takes you to your input LUTs. Obviously that's all set up. P5 adds and removes keyframes. P6 is select all. So if you're on your timeline and you wanna move everything or you wanna just delete it and start again, P6 selects all of your clips on the timeline. Really handy feature. So these three buttons down the left hand side, you've got the rolling edit tool, the link tool, which I use so much when we're using, um, when we're recording separate audio and we wanna link the two clips together so we can move them around the timeline. And we've also got the pen tool and the toggle trim tool there. So as the loop deck is primarily made for color correction, it does have some really nice features to do with that as well. So the hue, the saturation and the luminance buttons control your highlights, your midtones and your shadows within your color wheels. So the three wheels at the front correspond to um, whichever one that you've got highlighted. So the P1 is going to control our highlights. So if we move the first wheel up and down, you can see the dial on the highlights is going to go left to right. If you move the second one up and down, you've got up and down control. So you can really adjust the color to be exactly what you want it to be. And then the third one is your main control over the slide on the left. And saturation does the same for midtones. Luminance does the same for shadows. 
So I've had this loop deck for a couple of weeks now and I have been using it in my editing process. It does save me some time and I think eventually I could completely replace my shuttle with the loop deck if I get familiar enough with it. I am kind of in a rut where I've, I'm used to doing things a certain way so when I want to fast forward at least I know where that button is and that's a really handy feature but for zooming in and out my hand automatically gets drawn to my shuttle and I don't use the D1 tool. I may try and start using it more. When I started editing with the shuttle and the stream deck and my mouse I did actually push my keyboard right to the back of my desk so that I couldn't access it. I, I couldn't fall back into that position of trying to use the keyboard to do shortcuts and I had to learn where they were on the shuttle and I think it'll be a very similar experience with the loop deck I might have to get rid of all my other peripherals except for my mouse and just try and edit a video with it. For colour correction it's great and there are some really handy features in it. The um, I did talk about the things that I didn't like about it which was the sliders on the side there is one other thing that I'm not so keen on I wish it was wireless there is a wire actually running under this keyboard and down through my desk I would imagine that is something to do with having to power the unit maybe in the future iterations it'd be really nice if this was a wireless device um, that would make me really happy. Overall, I think it's a great device and I think every videographer should have one. If you're spending a lot of time sat in front of a computer, this will really speed up your workflow. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you decide whether you need a loop deck in your life. I know that I do need a loop deck in my life. Um, if you do need a loop deck, then please follow the link in the description and that will support the channel. Um, if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe for future videos with the same kind of content. Thanks again and see you next time.